Hello, Goosebumps fans, as we're waiting, Squid Jib, after freaking nine to ten months, gave us a brand new video. Damn, man. Damn. But the coolest part has to be the fact of listening what they said about the book. Somehow, which I guess it was basically a friend, maybe the bastard who stole my DS. I actually know what happened in the book, and I didn't really actually read it. I just remembered most of the stuff that happened in the book. Someone told me that. And I forgot when I was told that, and I thought I most likely imagined it. But the good news is that, no, no. It turns out I didn't know what happened in the freaking book. Thank goodness. So anyways, here's just a few highlights because, well, I, I'm i pretty soon going to have enough time to do it. But right now, I'm just going to throw this in. So anyways... I don't remember if it was in the episode, but Dan's nickname is Mouse. But sadly, in the book, they made it very repetitive. That was weird. And here's the interesting part. Now, here's a good one when it comes to the difference between the episode and the book. In the episode, I'm pretty sure he said he bought it at a store. That's what I think. I'm pretty sure he said he bought it at a store. So he got it from a cheap price because, well, he bought it at a store. Just like in the second mo second book, slash ep the first episode, second episode, they said that they bought it from a store. And technically in the first book, they bought it from a store. So bought it from a store, bought it from the store. Book-wise, they actually found it, he found it in the trash. But in episode, he found it at a store. So that kind of ruins the secret one I have. So I'm going to have to remake that one. Yeah, as soon as I'm able to actually bring it to life. But anyways, now here's the interesting weird part. In the book, the mom is away. But in the episode, they decide to have the mom there. What? Hey, 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 hey. If you're going to do that, how about you don't cast the mom in this episode and allow the dad to be in freaking be careful what you wish for. Give... Good for you writers, but technically the mom doesn't really need to be there. I don't really see any value of her being there. So, and don't tell me the whole thing of, oh, it's creepy that the dad is alone with three children. It's like, yeah, we're not dealing with the guy from Subway. Oh, damn, damn. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. But anyways, it's kind of weird. You have cast it. It's like there's many times where the parent is missing the sibling is missing but all of a sudden now it's like no 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 even in a book the mom is missing because she's away doesn't mean crap we're gonna bring the mom in this freaking damn video book in this episode and i'm like what that's weird that money and put it to another episode that actually needs to have something like be careful what you wish for the dad needed to be there and the brother needed to be there and you cut them both it's just the mom what the heck so let's see, we have in, yeah, it's kind of funny. It's that in the episode, they don't have Slappy slapping Zane, but from Squid Jib's point of view, because, well, they do skip some stuff. In the episode, he does get kicked. Yeah, so in the episode, he got kicked by Slappy. I don't know, man. It's hard to understand what's the difference but I think Zane actually caused Slappy to slap him, I think, in this one. So, here's a good one. Instead of in the episode where um, Rocky's right there with a hockey mask scaring the crap out of him, in the book, um, Rocky actually jumps on him. Yeah, he was set up kind of like what happened in Home Alone 2. I'll have to say, most likely, the one where he gets that freaking green gloop pushed on him. Or, let's see, what was another one? Uh, I think in the third movie, there was also one where the girl actually pulled down and she got, <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, same diff. Why not an episode? Well, because, well, I think Hayden Christensen has a good lawyer and they don't want to injure a kid, even though it's like, yeah, I think you'll be all right. <laughs> you know, anyways, here's a good one is because just like in the episode and in a the book, they both have a similar thing. It's just that they skipped in the episode for some reason. Well, it makes sense because they have a strict budget and they don't allow them to go through the freaking whatever and do whatever. After Zane found out 
that Zayn was doing his pranks to get back at him, they actually had a good time. They bike ride, and they actually had a good summer day picnicking and everything. And this is when they spot the whale, which is kind of funny to think about. It's like, hmm, so let me get this straight. The whale is kind of far away from their house. But on another hand, in the episode, the whale is actually very close to their house, I think. Yeah, it's like actually on their property. Hmm, lazy, but, you know, they have to make a budget. Oh, here's a good one. Zane's camera got destroyed. Yeah, so instead of in the episode where... Yeah, he didn't get his camera destroyed, but in the ep in the freaking book, Slappy destroyed his camera. Wow. Not to mention that in the episode, they decided to add in some stuff of where he takes pictures of the dummies. And yeah, and they also have a red room. So not to mention there's more dummy crap that happens after Zane, but they both do that. It's just different. Slappy actually carries Rocky, so unlike what happens in the episode, Slappy actually breathes life into Rocky. This one, he actually just carries Rocky everywhere. It's like, oh, damn, man. Let's see, Slappy at the dining room table, on the diner, dine, <laughs> dinner table, sorry. So after they threw him in the freaking um, well, which, note, they actually tied his legs I don't think they even mentioned about the trunk, but in an episode, they were like, yeah, we're putting him in the trunk. <laughs> and they're throwing him in there. So basically, Slappy is like Houdini. While in the book, unless Squid Jib missed something or they didn't tell us the whole entire story or part of it, I do remember he was binded up. They bind him up and then threw him in the... So it makes sense that he got free, but in the episode, it's like, holy freak, dude, you're a Houdini. You're able to get out of, let me see, um, they pushed him in the, yeah, so basically he wasn't even tied in the freaking suitcase. He just needed to get out of the suitcase and he's saved. Would have been cool if you actually tied him up in the suitcase and then threw him in the suitcase and threw him down. And it's like, holy frick, he is Houdini. <laughs> Let's see, not, uh-huh. Slappy takes the attic by two. Okay, so after the dinner table thing, that he's right there in the dinner table while Slappy actually, they the parents actually left for something. So the kids are now at home. Yeah, and that's when Slappy actually showed that he's alive and everything. And then they got rid of Slappy and then he came back and frog in my throat. <laughs> yep, and that's when they found out Slappy's back instead of the dining, the dinner table. He's sitting right there at the dinner table, which technically, hmm, I think they did do the dinner table scene, but it was a little bit different. Well, anyways, so let's see. That's about it. We're getting to the end where apparently one thing that they were hung up on is when Slappy actually got put back together. They were like, oh my gosh. There was a slug that crawled out of his head. What about the slug? What? Are you guys trying to say that he's like Jason Voorhees or something? Or Jason Voorhees has this freaking slimy eel bastard? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, if you put the slimy eel bastard inside of Jason's body, he's alive again. It's like, they didn't even talk about that in freaking Freddy vs. Jason, did they? Yeah, so before you talk about the slug here, go after Jason first. Even though, never mind, don't go after Jason. Jason had a freaking rough time where his game got screwed over, promises were made, and now they can't do the promises, and New Bastard owns the rights, which is like, that's good for you, Bastard, good for you, but what about the fans? The fans are going to suffer here. That's good for you, you own it, but on the other hand, the fans will kind of not look very kindly to you if you actually said, yeah, no more new content for the game. Yeah, um, Uber Jason and that freaking thing they promised and everything else. F that, it's like, yeah, they're not going to like you as a freaking new person who owns the rights. Not unless you give them good movies, which I doubt you're going to even do that. Sorry. Sorry to talk about that, but anyways, yeah, so slug, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, one good interesting part is... I talk about this all the time. Squid Jib basically says, no, that's not right. But the writers actually know what they're doing and made it even better. 
how they made it even better? Well, let's remember that in the book, basically, he did glue his face, the piece of face that was cracked, back into him. While, meanwhile, in the episode, he did glue it, but it popped off. Yep, and then all of a sudden, when he just left it there, he just left it there, not trying to glue it back on, some unbelievable magical stunt actually fixed his freaking face as if it wasn't cracked at all. That was awesome. That was a good write-in. Good job, writers. Well, anyways, how it ends. Very simple. First, Slappy actually was taken to the attic by the two cousins. Oh, frick. And then, all of a sudden... They decided to do what happened in the actual episode, which in the episode, Rocky was alive, Slappy was alive, and they decided to read the freaking words. And that's why I said the movie is just like this book. The fact that they said, oh, oh, I know how to reverse it by reading the words, by reading the words. And he tried to read the words, and well, Slappy's back up. Just like an episode, Slappy and Rocky's up. But the difference is that, I like the episode where apparently, again, yeah, they're restricted to the money. So it's like, even if you're not going to put the money somewhere else in another episode, forget the mom, frick the mom, frick the actress who plays the mom, get her out of here. Use that money to actually get the dummies up and running too. Because all the other dummies, when apparently they read those words, those dummies were alive too. That does kind of interfere with my idea of the dummies were alive the whole entire time because I talked about this. In the first book, I was saying Slappy was alive the whole entire time. The reason why he didn't do anything is because Mr. Wood scares the fuck out of him. Number two, Dennis was a freaking live in the freaking second book as well. The only thing is, well, he he doesn't know what the fuck is going on. He's alive now. And he's like, what the holy sh is going on here? And he sees the he sees Slappy. If he shows that he's alive, Slappy most likely will do some crap to him. That's why he didn't do anything until all of a sudden, oh, fuck, he's going to kill my family. I'm going to kick his ass, which good job, Dennis. Now here comes the third book where it's just like, I am not sure. I am not sure at all. Did they read the word? Oh, Frank, I got to get up. I got to remember what they said. Squidge up said. I don't think they read the words. Did they? Well, let's, if they did read the words, it might be, yeah, but Dennis was upstairs when, so basically the whole entire house, but on the other hand, it's a different house, not to mention it's an addict. Yeah, they're not. It's not a two floor. It's an attic. There's three floors. So for all we know, those dummies most likely either a they were alive this whole entire time too, which means as soon as Slappy actually was moving around and stuff, they have no idea what the fuck is going on either. Yeah, it's like they have no idea what's going on either. So kind of I think it's the same story as Dennis. It's like as soon as oh fuck, they're gonna he's gonna try to kill those kids, and it's like but we those children they they attacked which that is the dummies were alive and they attacked slappy after trying to read the words again yep the dummies went back so the dummies actually went back to normal not moving as soon as zane come in which is kind of weird it's like huh yeah i have no idea on that one I have no idea, so this third book actually kind of screws the pooch and everything, you know. But of course, you know, continuity-wise, it's like, I don't know. We never came to this question of what happens if you read those words, and instead of being on the second floor, they're up in the attic. It's like, does it have an area lock? Means that if the upstairs, downstairs, the words affect all around. But if you have an attic, it only affects the two floors in the attic. You have to actually stand in the middle or be on upstairs, read the words, and then they all are activated. Or just the fact, again, Slappy scares the fuck out of them. So they didn't do anything until they're like, okay, we're, we're tired of this shit. We're tired of this freaking damn shit. Not to mention the fact that the kids know that Slappy's alive, so... Why would they freak out if they go kick his ass now? <laughs> so that's basically it. It's like either A, 
they know that Slappy's, they, the kids know Slappy's alive. It's like, okay, well, there we go. I can kick your, we can kick his ass now because we're tired of this bullshit. We're tired of him moving us around, throwing us everywhere and putting us in this damn ceiling, putting us every freaking damn where without us getting the okay, you can do that. Even though it's like, he would kick your ass if you say no anyways. I mean, unless they all join together, but even so, it's like, this is a new experience for them. They're alive. But the weirdest part has to be the fact of they go back to not being alive after all. That's kind of weird if you think about it. And I don't know. I have to maybe read the second book one more time because maybe Dennis actually fell back to sleep after that. I don't think so. So I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I get it. What if... The dummies don't know that Zane knows that Slappy's alive, too. So to protect themselves, they went back down, too, just not to scare him, him because, well, they remember what happened the summer before. And if all of a sudden they show that they're alive, too, yeah, he's going to freak the hell out. So makes sense that they fell back to sleep. So I guess technically I solved the case. They're alive as well. So we got Dennis is alive. We got these dummies over here that's alive. Wow. But I bet chances are they're not going to reveal themselves alive because, well, the parents don't know that's alive. The parents don't know that the dummies are alive. They basically think that Slappy, they're lying and everything, and they don't want to scare the freaking parents, even though in the book it's a parent, while in the episode it's parents. So, while Dennis, on the other hand, Dennis is sitting pretty because... He showed himself as alive to everyone in the family. So Dennis is sitting pretty. Man, I wonder what happened to Dennis. I already talked about it, but I didn't actually. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Go ahead and watch that video. So there we go. But last but not least, we have to talk about the thing that happened to Zane. Now, in the episode, Zane actually got turned into a dummy, crazy enough. While in the book, there was no mention of it. Yeah, they didn't mention anything of it. All they just mentioned is that, oh yeah, his camera broke. Yeah, Slabby destroyed his camera. So, in the end, Zane needs a new thing, and since he's not scared of ventriloquist dummies anymore, guess what? He gets to have one of them on the freaking attic. And sadly, guess what the two freaking cousins do? They give him Slappy. And I, I thought I actually made this all up, but again, I guess a friend did tell me what happened. I really hope not the bastard with the DS, who stole my DS. But anyways, the good news is that, yes, I it's real. So when Slappy actually went into the trunk, he did wink at her. And that's the end, while in the episode, because he got kind of transformed into a dummy... He still has some of the capabilities of a dummy. Means that he's able to turn his head 360. Yeah. I don't know which one's freakier. I just think that the episode is freakier for the cousins. While in the book, it's kind of like a big screw you to Zane. And that's how it ends. So yeah, there's many things different from the episode and the book. And there's some things that the book did right, and some things that the episode did that was unnecessary, which is, again, just the mom. Not to mention, talking about this while the freaking second movie's out and just watching what they did to the mom, it's like, holy frick. Again, like the third book. Well, actually, the third book that turned into an episode. Because, again, Zane only turned into a dummy in the episode. And to see that in the movie, I... It was freaky as shit. It was very, very freaky. Like, oh my gosh, it was so freaky. Yeah, that was supremely freaky. Holy crap, that was supremely freaky. Woo! Oh my gosh. But yeah, that's what exactly happened in the third book. Coming up next, I guess it's Bad Hair Day, which again will just be another difference yeah well hopefully i'll get a part two on this where i actually get to listen into paparina as he actually look into this book 
and hopefully I'll actually have some more insight, or at least most likely I'll have more. I told you, I told you, the third book was the freaking inspiration to the second movie, even though not really. Apparently the guy just actually studied on Slappy's books and then did exactly what happened in the books in the movie. Except the difference is that, again, Zane only turned into a dummy in the episode, not in the book. So, yeah.